About to leave, already packing. Come with me, I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know. About to see the world in action. What we can be, life with no distractions. We'll get away, this is what we waited for. By a whole grade. By a whole grade. My teacher isn't just Mr. Maddock. It's a whole teaching team made up of James, Mike, and Marta. My classroom's all about doing and applying. My day standing at the front of the classroom with a PowerPoint are long gone. I master every concept by learning at my own pace. I spend 100% of my class time interacting and supporting individual students. I move on only when the moment is right for me, not the whole class. I know what each and every student is mastering and struggling on at every moment. I know exactly what I need to learn next, and I can go back and review material at any time. I spend my teaching time supporting and inspiring, not planning, delivering and marking. I can learn from anywhere at any time. I can switch off when school closes, knowing they are learning from the best. My teacher has my homework marked before I get to class. I set every piece of homework at the start of the year. I'm two weeks ahead of my expected progress. I can track everyone's progress with a swipe of a finger. I can track my own progress and set my own targets. I now have time to focus on developing the skills of every learner in my classroom. I know exactly what it means to explain, evaluate and analyse and I'm not afraid of any exam. My lessons are now far more about the skills and the application, not just the content itself. I've completely remodelled what it means to be a teacher in my classroom. La tercera sesión. Oh no. Please, <laughs>
<laughs> I'll start again. <laughs> Bienvenidos. Of course, if you don't put the microphones up, it doesn't work. Uh, bienvenidos a la tercera sesión de revisión. Uh, gracias, James. Tenemos aquí a James con nosotros en los controles. Hola, James. Hola a todos. ¿Cómo estamos? ¿Soy muy bien? Estoy, sí. 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 No, no, no. ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo estamos todos? Ah, ¿cómo estamos todos? Bien, bien, bien. Mm -hmm. ¿Sí? Uh -huh. Sí, sí, sí. Muy bien. Gracias, James. Y gracias por arreglar el micrófono. Como y... siempre, ¿no? Como siempre. Uh -huh. Y hola, Mike. Hoy te tenemos aquí a Mike. Hola. <ríe> uh, al cargo de las redes sociales. Hoy la revisión, ¿sobre qué es? Hoy la revisión es sobre la tecnología. ¿Sí? Los ordenadores, las redes sociales, etc. Y también sobre el imperfecto, the imperfect. Vale. Sí, gracias. Um, so, these two topics today, technology and imperfect. So, we, I'm not going to be too long in this first, first bit so that we can get, um, you know, we can crack on with technology looking at what vocabulary we need to know. Just let me give you a few reminders, let you uh, remind you of a few things. First things, may, first thing, make sure you've got your notes sheets with you, okay? In this case, la tecnología and the imperfect. You've got the practice questions behind you. You can do the, the practice question. Uh, while you watch this, or even better, during the break or after the session. Segundo, suscríbete a YouTube. Aquí abajo, sí, aquí debajo, aprieta, clica, haz clic sobre subscribe. Um, if you subscribe, if you activate the notifications, this way we will be able to provide an even better service, even better session. So please, please, please do subscribe and activate the notifications. Uh, tercero, Contáctanos, poneos en contacto. We want you to participate. So two ways to do it as usual. First thing, our interactive question that you, you will find through the everlearner.com. Go to news, click on news, click on interactive questions and there you've got the list of activities available at the moment from the GCSE se sessions. This is our third session, tercera sesión. So uh, what we've got for you today is a reading comprehension activity on technology. Just do it, click submit and we'll receive the answer. We'll get some, <clears throat> we'll, we'll get a, a student pack of the roadmap straight to you if we can see that yours to be the best answers. And the last thing to remind you of, participate with us through Twitter. You can send us your questions, of course, but also we want you to send to send us your pictures of what you do during those revision breaks you take. Where do you need to send them? What do you need to do? You need to hashtag us. Okay. Uh, hashtag revision break or in Spanish, almohadilla revision break. That's how we call the hashtag almohadilla, literally little cushion. Um, That's what it looks like, doesn't it? So remember, almohadilla. Um, so just take the pictures, hashtag revision break, we'll receive them. And again, we will give a um, student pack of the revision, uh, sorry, of the roadmap to the best pictures you can see, you, you send us. Anything else, James, I need to remind people of before I crack on with the technology? No, I think you've covered everything. I think the key thing for me is we're very close to a thousand subscribers. Yep. It's a very, very, very important number for us. It mm -hmm. means very little to you uh, to subscribe to our channel, but it means a massive amount to us. So please, if you sort of think I'll do it later, please don't. Please do do it. We 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 provide these for free because we 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 our subscribership builds through the YouTube channel. So we can only keep doing that in that with that combination of uh, things. So please do do it. It's really important. Mm -hmm. Gracias, James. Muchas gracias. Okay. Pues vamos a empezar con la tecnología. ¿Preparados? Vamos. Ok, so let's have a look at the topic of la tecnología and see what vocabulary we may need to, um, you know, we may need to know for listening and reading, but also for writing. Ok, this is a topic you know, what technology do you use on a daily on a daily basis? What do you use? Do, what do you do in your free time? What did you used to use before? How has your life, life changed? Things like that could thing could be things that easily could appear in a writing um, assessment. Okay, so do pay attention and let's make sure that we know as many of these as much as this vocabulary as possible. So, vamos a empezar. Para empezar, vamos a mirar los dispositivos 
los dispositivos o los aparatos, aparatos electrónicos. ¿Cuáles son los dispositivos o aparatos electrónicos? En primer lugar, tenemos el teléfono, el teléfono móvil, el teléfono móvil. También tenemos un poco más grande, tenemos la tableta, el teléfono móvil, la tableta. También tenemos el ordenador, el ordenador portátil y también tenemos, por ejemplo, el ordenador de sobremesa, ¿sí? El ordenador, el ordenador de sobremesa que tiene una pantalla, tiene la pantalla, tiene el ratón y tiene el teclado. ¿Sí? La pantalla, el ratón y el teclado. Y también tenemos, también tenemos como dispositivos, también hay, por ejemplo, las consolas de videojuegos. Las consolas de videojuegos, video games consoles. Okay? So here we've got a few names of a few devices that you may want to use when it comes to talking about what technology we uh, you use okay so if we now move on to okay how do i use this thing this technology okay let's have a look what could we say we could say for example en el trabajo en el trabajo o en la escuela okay so he, we could start with this for things that we do at work or at school at college okay So, en primer lugar, mando, mando emails, mando emails. Another word for emails is also correos, correos electrónicos. Oh. Maybe this last one is maybe a bit more sort of proper Spanish, but maybe, uh, if to be fair, people tend to talk more and more about emails. So, um, tenemos mando. I send, but we could also say recibo, I receive, okay, mando y recibo, I send, I receive, mando, recibo. También recibo emails, ¿dónde? En mi buzón, esto es el buzón, okay, the inbox es el buzón. También recibo, recibo We could say mucho correo basura. Okay, recibo mucho correo basura. Notice this word basura is um, letter, yeah, letter or uh, refuse. So for spam, we say correo basura. Okay, and in this case, it would be recibo. Sí. También utilizo el internet. Utilizo el internet y en internet. Busco, busco información, busco información. Important verb this, buscar, sí, busco, which can be to look for. But also we could use buscar for to research, sí. Look, uh, yeah, to look for or to research. So busco información. También... Guardo información. Guardo información. This is the verb guardar. Guardar, which is to put away or to save. And I've done here this little icon that many of you won't, you know, some of you will relate to the action of to save, but you may never, you probably never ever have used one of these little discs. And what you may use more these days other than cloud, um, by the way, if you want to talk about the cloud as in the space where you save something, that would be la nube, exactly the same as in the weather. 
um, la nube de cloud and this would be una memoria una memoria USB okay? so you could say guardo información en una memoria USB okay? if you keep save information you need to organize it and how do you organize it you could say archivo archivo mis documentos archivo mis documentos and this is the verb okay archivo is from the verb archivar archivar which is to file okay and this verb you may encounter it both in the topic of technology but also in the topic of work and jobs because for example if they were describing a job as a um, secretary for example part of what the job might entail would be to file documents so this word archivar would be in in in, in that job description okay so it, it is a verb that does does tend to appear every now and again. And finally, vale, finalmente, what can I do with my documents? Puedo imprimir. So imprimo, imprimo, I print, imprimo mis documentos. Or we could say imprimo una fotografía. I print a picture, for example, una fotografía. Okay, so. We've got here lots of different things I can do with technology when it comes to the field of work or school. Okay? When it comes to the field of free time, el tiempo libre, okay? En mi tiempo libre. So what could I say if I've got here, okay? So we've got here differentiated. So this is what I do in terms of work or school. ¿Qué hago en mi tiempo libre? En mi tiempo libre, descargo, descargo música, descargo música, ¿sí? I download music. I could also say, of course, escucho, escucho música. I could also say escucho música. It's, it's becoming more and more popular and more and more normal to do en streaming okay and notice the pronunciation okay we would say in, in streaming on a streaming okay we, we tend to add an a, an e in spanish just we may not write it but we may say it okay so notice that sometimes especially with technology we may have words that are in english and we just use it in spanish you use them in spanish but we sort of pronounce them a little bit more spanish okay so escucho música en streaming for example uh, important also to remember words like I know you, some of you, you won't use these anymore, but they may still appear in things like listening comprehension activities. References to CDs, okay? CDs, CDs. MP3. DVDs. DVDs. So I know if you see these right in, in writing, you will know straight away what they are. But if you hear them, you it may take you a little while to relate and, and remember what they are, okay? And, and realize that they are oh, DVD, DVD, okay? So do pay attention and do remember to revise your um, your letters, okay? The names of letters, important for, for spelling. I could also say it's not necessarily uh, music, but also related to the media. We could say, we could say, uh, miro, miro películas, miro películas en Netflix, por ejemplo, ¿sí? Miro películas en Netflix. ¿Qué más? En mi tiempo libre también visito, visito las redes sociales. Visito las redes sociales como Instagram, Facebook y Twitter, por ejemplo. ¿Sí? Instagram, Facebook y Twitter. ¿Y qué hago? So, visito, important verb, ¿eh? visito. También cuelgo cuelgo fotos en mi perfil cuelgo fotos en mi perfil cuelgo I post literally I hang okay and this is from the verb colgar 
to hang. So we we gen we tend to hang pictures rather than post them. We, I suppose it's the the old fashioned image of of you hanging a picture on your wall. Okay, so uh, cuelgo fotos en mi perfil on my profile. We could also say en mi muro. Okay, en mi muro, and this would be the word for wall. On Facebook, for example, you've got your wall, haven't you? I could also say chateo. Chateo con mis amigos. Chateo con mis amigos. Por WhatsApp. O por Messenger. Okay? Chateo con mis amigos por WhatsApp o por Messenger. And one expression that you may have been encouraged to learn, although many, many of you, again, don't really will use them anymore because they, I'm not even sure they exist anymore, are las salas de chat, chat rooms, okay? Um, so remember that chatear is to chat online. If we just talk in person, if you just chat to someone in person or over the phone, remember that we will use the verb, oh, hold on, we will use the verb charlar okay charlar will be when it's in person or over the phone when it's online we will use charlar what else can we do online so other than doing things to do with music or with cinema or with social network or chatting of chatting with friends um, another thing we can do is we, I could say leo periodicos Periodi, I left a name, periodicos y revistas digitales. Okay, important verb again. You know this verb, leer. Okay, leo, I read. Periodicos y revistas digitales. Digital magazines and, so magazine, revista and newspaper, periodico. Okay, really important word. Remember also, related to this word periodico, we've also got the word periodista, a journalist, periodista, which is a journalist, okay? So important, do learn and do tend to relate words. We have heard something similar to this word, okay? Y finalmente, what are the things I can do in my free time related to the internet? Uh, pues I could say, creo, creo mi sitio web, I create my own website, creo mi sitio web, publico, publico artículos, ok, publico artículos, o subo, subo fotos a internet, subir, a internet, subir, ok, this is subir, is as you may know to climb up, to go up, but also if you if you say subo fotos or subo artículos, that's to upload, okay? So descargar is to download, and we've seen that verb before here, descargar, um, and to upload, when you put some of your own production online, then that's subir, okay? Um, now, when we're talking about the internet, there are as well los riesgos. Riesgos. ¿Qué riesgos hay por internet? So, un riesgo son los virus, por ejemplo, los virus. También los hackers, por ejemplo, los hackers. Notice how in Spanish we use the same word, but we do the H, the caja, ok, los hackers. También otro riesgo puede ser, por ejemplo, el ciberacoso. El ciberacoso, okay, that's online um, harassment, okay. So do think of any 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 problems that could be associated with the with the internet, and um, and, and what could happen, okay. So I could say, for example, I could use um, hold on, I could use the expression perder perder la información to lose the information, okay, perder los deberes, if I get a virus and all my, los deberes, and all my homework is lost, perder, to lose, okay, so that's one of the consequences or one of the possible risks of the internet and, and of, uh, yeah, of, of technology. 
And finally, things that you need to think about are cognates. As I said, this field of technology is, is very much influenced by English. So we, we, de we're developing more and more vocabulary in Spanish, which is basically based on, on English words. And I've got, for example, words like bloquear, bloquear, to block. So if I if there's someone on Twitter and I don't want that person to look at my profile, whatever, I can block them. So I've got this verb, bloquear. I could say bloqueo o bloqueé, for example. I blocked, bloqueé a Juan. He was annoying me and I blocked him. Bloqueé a Juan. Another interesting ad, um, verb is bloguear. Bloguear. Notice this is a G, okay? Bloguear, to blog, okay? And we've got the noun un blog. Notice how it's pronounced slightly different, okay? Un blog. And from here, we also have a person who writes blogs is un blogger, okay? If you're thinking, there's also, nowadays, there's also vlogs, aren't they? Now, in Spanish, we don't call them blogs because then it would be difficult to, this, to, to differentiate between this one and this one because the sound of the B and the V is the same. We call these un video blog, okay, un video blog, and a vlogger would be un video blogger, okay, un video blogger. Other verbs, um, other verbs of, of new creation, we've got things like tuitear, tuitear, to tweet, and of course we've got a noun like un tweet, un tweet, a tweet. We've also got new people. We've got un Instagrammer. Un Instagrammer. We've also got un YouTuber. Okay, un Instagrammer, un, un YouTuber. Okay, and notice how, again, I'm pronouncing these in a slightly more Spanish way. Okay, so do think, really interesting, do think of any new vocabulary that, that, that you are using, any, any words that you're using related to technology, to the websites, to, to the social media that you use, and think how may they be, you know, how could they be in Spanish? And if I wanted to write about these, how would I say that? Okay, so I hope that all of these vocabulary makes sense. I hope it has helped you. I hope it has, you know, you have learned something new and I hope that it, it has learned you sort of refresh your memory from, from what you had already learned. Okay. Um, um, yeah, we're going to go back to the studio in a second and, uh, and yeah, I'm back right straight away.
Bienvenidos de nuevo. I'm having a nightmare today with the controls of the sound. Um, bienvenidos. I hope the topic of uh, technology is clear. It's not the trickiest one. It's not the most difficult topic, I don't think. In fact, it may be one of the easiest, just because there's quite a lot of um, there are quite a lot of uh, what's it called cognates, words that are very similar to to English, but really, really important that you remember that you really need to think how would I pronounce these in Spanish, okay? Because sometimes things can you know catch you a bit by surprise if you don't think in the Spanish pronunciation of things. Just you know, in, in the same case that you know, in the same, um, I mean, it's as simple as you know, if you think about Twitter, Twitter. Yeah, when a Spanish person says it, it's going to say Twitter. So you have to, you know, you, you, you need to get these things, you know, get thinking of these things. So anyway, um, really important to really um, be good at this topic because it could appear in many different in, in many different situations. Of course, you could have, for example, in exams, an, a question about specifically about technology, but you could also have something about free time where technology makes an appearance. You could have something about, for example, family and relationships and, and something about maybe someone is all the time on the phone or doing this, doing that or with some sort of technology. So it could make an appearance there. It could also appear in something related to jobs and what tasks you do in your job so you know very very important to bear that in mind um, and what what else, what other thing I wanted to mention as well yes also within technology it would be really useful if you also revised your spelling okay the names of the letters why because probably in in times gone by it was very relatively common to find questions especially for example in the listening where someone would book a room on the phone and give their name and have to spell their name if you think about it nowadays who books a room in a hotel on the phone we all do it online don't we however something very typical is to have to spell out someone's email address or your own email address to someone because they're not quite sure of how you spell it so really important that you do remember you you revise the the names of the letters and also words like for example arroba the word for ad yeah arroba or punto dot or guion dash or guion bajo hyphen okay so all these things okay i wouldn't put them right on top of the priority list but if you've got three spare minutes at some point do have a look even if it's just for curiosity okay and do remind yourself of, of yourselves of those of those little things so the second part of the of the session the the next um the next um, sort of teaching uh, session is going to be on the imperfect and that's because that's also one area where you can use technology for you may be asked about to talk about technology what you use but also compare it to what you used to use before okay what did you use before what did you do before what do, did people do before there was email for example okay so that's why I'm, i've chosen to put the imperfect together with technology so we'll see it in the second part of the session now uh before we go on to that uh james you are going to show a little bit the uh website the everlearner.com and we we wanted to show you guys one of the really really good features of our new uh site which is being able to take notes online so i'm going to show you that and i also have a couple of questions for you which do you prefer to do first um up to you you want to ask the questions first okay so better. questions mm -hmm. first before i ask this first one I realize I'm, uh, Spanish teachers are listening to me right now. I'm not a Spanish teacher. I'm just someone who has a go. So please don't That's be excellent. too judgmental of me that I may make, make some mistakes. So, Marta, ¿eres tú un YouTuber o no? Y si, y si la respuesta es sí, mm -hmm. uh, ¿qué tipo de uh, tecnología utilizas por esta razón? Mm -hmm. Vale, vale. Primera pregunta, soy YouTuber. You, so YouTube YouTuber, as we would say in Spanish, YouTuber. Sometimes I find it hard to pronounce things the Spanish way. Uh, so YouTuber or no? Eh, hasta cierto punto, sí, uh, porque hago sesiones por YouTube, así que sí, yo soy YouTuber. ¿Y qué uh, tecnología utilizo? Buena pregunta para um, para retransmitir en YouTube. Utilizo un ordenador portátil, que está aquí, un ordenador portátil. Utilizo también una tableta, una tableta para eh, escribir, para escribir las sesiones. También utilizamos un micrófono o varios micrófonos. 
um, auriculares, auriculares. Utilizamos también una mesa de mezclas. You're not going to see this, but there's a mixing table here. Una mesa de mezclas, not top of your priority list of vocabulary. You want me to try and lift, um, lift it up? I'll, I'll yeah, I just, you, I just don't want to drop it. I don't, don't want to disconnect it. <laughs> I'll, I'll try. I'll try. So this would be, whoop, this is una mesa de mezclas. Uh, you might, if you are into, you know, like um, music mixing and things like that, you may want to know this word to write about what you do in your free time. Useful. Y también utilizamos un ordenador de sobremesa. Over here, we've got a bigger, a big computer, a, a desktop computer, and we call that un ordenador de sobremesa on the table, literally. Um, have I missed any 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 technology that we are using no, right now? I don't, I don't think so. No. Well, I guess we're using Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. Sí, utilizamos things. claro uh, redes sociales, Twitter mm. y Facebook, sí, y Instagram. Mm. Um, y sí, y algún uh, software. Mm. Sí, the word for software in Spanish is software. So that's that's good news. <laughs> okay, Muy that's, bien. that's great. So let me let me see if I can show everybody uh, this little process here. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm going to switch so I'm directly on here. What we wanted to show you guys is, and we're showing both teachers and students this, and by the way, you can you can get involved with this completely for free, by the way. So we wanted to show you one feature. We wanted to show you how to make notes online against specific content. So here, for example, we have all of the content which March has created for various uh, topic areas. But the one I'm going to quickly show you is the one that we're going to do, uh, Martha's is going to teach uh, imminently, which is the past tense and where have you gone imperfect indicative imperfect left, indicative. left a bit ah, yeah so if i go into this um basically what i've got here is i've got some content that i can study that martyrs prepared to teach me so i can start here i don't think you're going to get the sound from the video but this is not going to shock you look martha's going to go over here for for us all of the key content regarding that skill that grammatical structure and you guys obviously you guys can study that you can restudy it if you've forgotten it from year nine or ten or whatever you can restudy it and go back over it but importantly over here first of all i have all of the other content that i might want to go and study i can go and look at something else if i want to and it tracks all of my activity but important importantly i've got my notes here so here martha seems to be telling me something about um uh, saltabas and i'm going to write here the word saltabas the word saltabas is very important because and you know i'm gonna i'm gonna write something in there important obviously we want to spell correctly it's very important because and i could write something in there and the important thing you know whatever i write i'm going to save that note here it gets saved for me and i can edit it as well if i want to but notice this number here it gets saved directly against that specific moment in the tutorial that in my opinion one of the best teachers available Marta, is is teaching you now again i could i could make another note up here let's let's just go forward here i you know i might be learning about uh the differences so the difference between beber and beber is and you know whatever i write it doesn't really matter but now i can save it there and now i'm building up this repertoire of notes now mm. importantly if i search these notes later and i want to think to myself well what was that thing about saltabas? The word saltabas is very important because I just hit that and I'm straight back to learning about saltabas. Or I hit this one and I'm straight back to learning the differences, if that's what it's about, between beber and beber. Yeah, it's, it's not quite about that, but yeah, I, I, mean, know, I, know. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. I mean, in this case, for example, you could you could make make yourself some notes with the different endings of, of yeah, for absolutely. the two types of verbs, for example, and then you you can quickly um, go and 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 if you if if you took the notes but don't quite remember how it worked, then quickly you click on that note and it will take you straight to the to the video to the point in the video where where that was explained. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm just making yeah, a no, no, I know, very I know. simple thing here. I yeah. wasn't trying to say that my no, content no, no, no. was right. No, but you <laughs> you can you can know this and note yeah. these bookmarks in the tutorial. So not only are we tracking whether you as the student have done all of the video, you notice know, down here I've only done little chunks of it, but also you can bookmark this content and visit this content whenever you need it. And let me tell you that over a period of time, if you use that well as a student, you are going to be razor sharp. Okay, razor sharp. And it's going to develop some really good skills in you. So anyway, I wanted to share that with you. Hopefully it's useful for you guys to 
uh, to have a look at. Mm -hmm. Gracias, muchas gracias, James. Okay, so now let's go on to the second part of this session. Let's go and look precisely at what James was showing us here, the imperfect. So a little reminder of how we use it and when we use the imperfect. Let's just remember it's a tense or it's a form of the past tense. So let's remind ourselves of when and how we use that. I will see you afterwards. So let's have a look at the imperfect. Okay, and we're going to start by looking at two things. One is when. When is the imperfect used? And the other one is the how. Okay, how how do we build the imperfect? Let's look first at when the imperfect is used so that we can start to understand when am I going to use it? Okay, what, what is the imperfect good for? And when am I going to use it? So the first case where I'm going to use the imperfect is uh, probably a bit of a classic, okay? Which is like to, is to describe. So let's remember that the imperfect is a tem, a time, sorry, it's a tense of the past, okay? It's a form of past tense. So if we are describing we're going to be describing something in the past. So we're going to describe what something, what something or someone, it can be used for people, it can be used for uh, things, uh, what something or someone, oh, sorry, was or looked like before. Okay, it can also be what someone or someone looked like at a certain point, uh, at a certain time in the past. Okay, at a certain time in the past. So, what do I mean by this? If I'm talking about my holidays and I want to describe what the hotel was like. So I'm going to, I'm talking about my holidays, I'm talking what I did, I'm talking what, about where I went. So I'm saying, I'm explaining everything in the past. So when I'm explaining, when I'm describing what the hotel was like, I'm also describing it in the past. Like, like I do in English, I just said what the hotel was like. It doesn't mean that that hotel's not there anymore. It doesn't mean that that hotel is now any different. I may have been on holiday last week, the hotel is still the same. But because I'm expressing, I'm explaining everything in the past, I'm also, if I want to also describe the hotel in the past tense, this is the tense I'm going to use. It's the imperfect, okay? So a sentence in the imperfect to describe the hotel, I could say, for example, el, oops, sorry, el hotel, el hotel era enorme. El hotel era enorme. And as we will see in a minute, this era is a form of the imperfect. Okay, if I translate it, the hotel was enormous. I could also say, el hotel, el hotel tenía dos piscinas. The hotel had two swimming pools. It doesn't mean it doesn't have them anymore. It just means that I'm, I'm, I'm describing something from the past. So the hotel where I stayed, so I'm, I'm describing it in past tense. And if I'm describing in the past tense, I'm using the imperfect. I could also say, um, I could also say if I wanted, for example, to describe um, my grandma, okay, what she was like, I could say, mi, mi abuela, mi abuela tenía el pelo gris. My grandma, sorry. My grandma had grey hair. Mi abuela tenía el pelo gris. And I would also be using the imperfect because I'm describing what someone used to be like. Okay? So, important, um, important to understand. One of the uses of the imperfect. Another use of the imperfect. I'm going to use a different colour in this case. Another use of the imperfect. The... Second, the second one I'm going to, to tell you about is uh, that we use it to say or to explain what, what someone used to do in the past. Okay, we can also say for what, we can also use it for what used to happen. 
okay? So habits, things that happened on a regular basis. So for example, if I used to play football, okay, if I used to play football in the past, when I was a child, I could say, cuando era pequeña, yo jugaba a fútbol. Yo jugaba a fútbol. And this jugaba is the imperfect. Okay? And in this case, I'm not explaining, I'm not describing something that I did once or twice or something that happened in a particular occasion. I'm explaining what used to be the case. So I used to play football. I could say uh, Manuel used to dance ballet. So I would say Manuel. Manuel bailaba. Oh, sorry. Bailaba. Vale. Ok. Manuel bailaba. Vale. Ok. And again, it's something that he may not do anymore. It's something in the past. He, he danced ballet. He used to dance ballet. So I'll, I'll use it in the imperfect. And this one is really, really important. Ok. And it's important to notice that it is not something that happened once, twice. It's not an event. It's uh, something that happened on a regular basis. I'm sorry if you hear a little bit of background noise right now. There's a helicopter just hovering around. Um, so I hope this is not coming through the microphone too, um, too loudly. Let me carry on. And the third case where I'm going to use the imperfect is to say, okay, to say what someone was doing in the past. So let's let's say for ongoing ongoing activities. So for example, what do I mean by this? If I I don't know. If the phone rings and it, and I'm having a shower, okay? If I'm explaining that this happened yesterday, if I want to say the phone rang while I was having a shower, when I was ha having a shower, this having a shower, this me having a shower, is an ongoing activity. So this was happening when the phone rang. Yeah. So this activity of having a shower, which is what was happening when the phone rang, this would be in the um, imperfect. Okay. So uh, in this case, this would be in Spanish, sonó el, oh, hold on. El teléfono, so no, el teléfono, the telephone rang, and notice this is not imperfect, this is uh, preterite, okay? So ignore this one for now. So no, el teléfono, uh, mientras, while, me duchaba. Okay, so no, el teléfono, mientras, me duchaba. And this duchaba is in the imperfect because it's an ongoing thing. This was happening when the phone rang. I was in the shower. Okay, so it's these three cases mainly where we will use the imperfect as the, te as the, as the past tense that we will need to use. Okay, now, so having seen this, let's have a look at how we build the present, uh, sorry, the, the imperfect, and then we will, I'll, I'll give you some more examples so that you finish understanding how it all works. So if you look here on the, on the left hand side or towards the center of the page, you've got, you've got here three examples, one for each type of verb. So this one for the AR verbs, this one for the ER verbs, this one for the IR verbs. And this is what happens. The main thing you need to remember is that there are two different sets of endings. This one for the AR ending, which are characterized by the presence of, of an ABBA, okay? Navegaba, yo navegaba, tú navegabas, él, ella navegaba, navegábamos, navegabais, navegaban, okay? And another set of endings, which is for both the ER and the IR verbs. Okay, these two type of verbs, the ER and the IR verbs, they do this, they, they share the same endings. And that's got the IA. Leía, leías, leía, leíamos, leíais, leían. Recibía, recibías, recibía, recibíamos, recibíais, recibían. Okay, same set of endings. So two different sets of endings, relatively straightforward. Just remember, AR has one end, one set, ER and IR has another one. 
So if I, what would I, what would I use this for? So let's say, for example, that I used to receive lots of letters. So before the internet, I used to receive lots of letters. So I've got recibir is to receive, which I've got it here, because it, I want to say I used to receive. It's going to be this one. Okay. So I could say antes antes del internet, before the internet, antes del internet, yo recibía muchas cartas. Antes del internet, yo recibía muchas cartas. And I'm using the I, um, the IA ending, IA because it's an I a verb and also because it's the I form, okay, recibía. If instead of recibir, I wanted to use the verb vivir, so for example, if I wanted to say before I used to live in, I don't know, before I used to live in Zaragoza, okay, so this is what I want to say. Before I used to live in in Zaragoza. Okay, so I'm going to, I, it's really important that I look at two things. It's important that I lo you look at this and I take the whole of the used to live and I don't get bogged down with trying to think, how do I say in Spanish? I used to, because I need to remember this used to, all, it, all, all I need to think about is it's a certain form of the verb. So it's the imperfect. So I need to think, okay, this is going to be the imperfect in the I form. And what is the verb going to be? The verb is vivir. So if I have vivir, I'm going to get rid of the IR ending as it usually happens. And because it's I used to live, this is going to be the ending IA. So instead of vivir, I'm going to have vivia. So therefore, the whole, the final sentence will be antes. vivía en Zaragoza. Antes vivía en Zaragoza. Okay, another sentence I could say similar to here. I could say before the internet, we used to send many letters. So I want to say before the internet, we used to send many letters. Okay, in that case, I need to look the verb, I need to take all of this as the verb used to send. So what do we what I'm going to do is get the verb send, which is NBR in the we form in the imperfect because it's something that used to happen. So because it's we and it's imperfect, I'm going to get rid of the AR ending. And I'm going to look, it's an AR verb, and in the we form, nosotros, so I'm going to need amamos. So I'm going to do navegábamos. Okay, so antes del internet, navegamos, uh, sorry. I got that completely wrong. It's not navegábamos, of course. It's the verb enviar. So it's enviábamos. So antes del internet, enviábamos muchas cartas. Okay, so the <clears throat> the imperfect is, is a tense that you will need to be good at. You will need to be able to use well to express any time, you know, anything that if make you write about, yeah, about this, um, the free time or technology. What did you used to do before? What, okay, any time that someone asks you, how was that different? What happened before that doesn't happen now? Um, what did you used to, I don't know, what did you used to enjoy at school? What did you used to, uh, what sports did you used to do? You will need the imperfect for, okay? Now, the last thing I'm going to 
mention regarding the imperfect is these irregular verbs. The good thing about the imperfect is that, is that there are very few irregular verbs, specifically three main ones, ser, ver and ir. Ser is to be, ver is to see and ir is to go. So these are all, yeah, all, all the verbs basically that you need to remember that are imperfect in the, in, uh, are irregular in the imperfect. That's the right way around. And also, if you look at them, they're not massively irregular, okay? You need, okay, from ser to era, it's super irregular. But once you know era, the rest is pretty eras, era, eramos. It's, it's, it follows quite a regular pattern. It's got the mos for the we, it's got the eyes for the you guys, it's got the n for the um, they, it's got the s for the you singular, okay? So it, it's feasible. And ver and ir, Mm, basically the same thing. Once you remember how the your form is, the rest is pretty easy to, to do, okay? So veía, I used to see, veías, you used to see, etc. And then iba, I used to go, ibas, you used to go, and so on and so forth, okay? So let me give you an, an example with uh, a few of these verbs. So for example, if I wanted to describe what my sister was like before, and I wanted to say that she was very shy, this is what the form I'm, I, I would take, okay? So I would say, mi hermana, mi hermana era muy tímida. Mi hermana era muy tímida. If I wanted to say, we were watching TV last night, we were watching TV last night, maybe when the, you know, when someone arrived, we were watching TV, I would take this one. Veíamos, this is an eye by the way, just it doesn't look very much like an eye. Veíamos la tele anoche, last night, cuando llegó Maria, when Maria arrived, okay? We were watching TV last night, veíamos la tele anoche, cuando llegó Maria, okay? And if I wanted to say they used to go on holiday to the Canaries, okay? They used to go iban. So iban de vacaciones a las Canarias, okay? So imperfect, easy, you know, relatively straightforward endings. Just You just need to remember when to use it, the three occasions when you need to use that imperfect. And the last thing really that you need to remember is a few expressions that, um, that you may need to use quite often with the imperfect, okay? Things like, for example, cuando, cuando era pequeño o pequeña, when I was a child, when I was small, when I was little, o cuando... Cuando era más joven, when I was younger, or antes, before, okay? So think of time expressions that you could use to, when you want to talk about what things were like before, for example, okay? And that will, will help you frame the sentence a bit more um, correctly, okay? So now I'll leave the imperfect for, for now here, and I'll be back with you in one second with a change of mic. Okay. Okay. Bueno, pues ya estamos de vuelta. I hope um, this whole thing of the imperfect makes sense. It's always, it's a bit, a bit, it can be a bit of a, how do you say it in English? A hard nut to crack. Um, a hard nut to crack. Yeah, that's what I said. It was a bit of a knot, not a nut. Oh, I see. It's, it's my, you see, that's, that's what you get, isn't it? I'm with a foreign speaker. Never mind. Um, so yeah, any any questions, James? Any questions coming in, or you've got any questions about any of the um, of the bits that yeah that I've explained? And... I have a Jimbo question. You've got a Jimbo question, okay? Let yeah, us know. I would like you just to clarify for me, as as a, a budding uh, student of Castilian Spanish, I just want to clarify the difference between, let me get my terminology right, the imperfect and the preterite. Right, okay. This is, um, yeah, the, the, this, the, this is a, an issue that many, many students of, of Spanish as a foreign language 
uh, find problems with the difference between imperfect and preterite. We've seen here the imperfect and we've seen that what we use the imperfect for is things like describing things in the past, what something was like in the past, and also saying what someone was doing, for example. So it's, it's giving basically the important thing about the imperfect is giving this impression of ongoing, okay, of, of something that was happening in the past. Now, when we, what we want to do is to describe an event, something that happened, even if it happened several times, but something that happened, an event, then that's when we use the preterite. So, for example, if I wanted to say I, I don't know, I used to use, let's say I don't use Facebook anymore, I used to use Facebook, I would say, and like before, I would say antes, before, utilizaba Facebook. So before I used to use Facebook. Now, if what I wanted to say is that I used Facebook to something specific, for example, I don't know, to sell my shoes, you know, you can sell stuff through Facebook. So I could say utilicé, and that's the, the preterite, utilicé Facebook para vender mis zapatos. So it's a difference because one, this last one, is an event, is something I did, is an action that took place and finished. While I used to use Facebook is not an event, is something that was going on in the past, okay? So th this becomes clearer the more you use it and the more the more exposure you have to it. But this is the, the biggest difference between the two. So I would use the imperfect for something that I did in the past, but effectively has, en has, e has ended. So I used to play football for the, the blue team. Mm -hmm. it, it, it happened in the past and it's ended now. Hmm. Yeah, it, it, it's, uh, yeah. Yes, for for things, the thing is, if you if you look if you say the thing of an event, it's something it's also something that's ended, because with the example yeah. I was giving, if I sold mm. my shoes on eBay, if I used, sorry, I was saying Facebook, wasn't it? If I used Facebook to do that, I used it and it's over, it's finished with, okay. But it's more the idea that it's an event, so it's it's taken. You, you almost see it like a little snippet, like an event, something that happened in the preterite mm. in the imperfect you see it as a something that was taking place as a habit for example to talk about habits things that used to be the case in the past that's imperfect because it's not an event it's not something that happened once or twice it's something that used to be the case okay, okay? so i used to do a hell of a lot of clubbing when i was at university yeah that would be imperfect okay. see si. salia salia o iba a la discoteca see si. that would be imperfect Sorry. yeah Sorry. brilliant so uh, a couple of reminders before we finish the session, uh, reminding you to you know get cracking with your practice questions on 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 the on the note sheets. If you haven't got the note sheets, still remember you've got the description under the video, um, so you've got you can you can access them through here. Also, you can participate in our inter on our interactive question. And uh, unless I have missed anything, of course, subscribe to YouTube and put um, notifications on. And James, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think I've missed anything. I think all we've got left to do is yeah, say... Yeah, we're good. Um, the, the only thing I was to say, just a little announcement. I'm very proud. We only had 101 drop frames out of over a million frames streamed today. Okay, I'm no sure cares, it means care, a lot. It's our yeah. best ever and it's something I worry about and Fantastic. keep me up at night. So. Okay. I'm happy. If someone's wondering, it's got to do with uh, yeah the broadcast and the, yeah, the the live streaming, and yeah. So all I've got to do is uh, say adios, hasta luego, and invite you to the next session. Okay, la próxima sesión es el jueves a la una de la tarde, de una a dos de la tarde. Pues hasta aquí. Nos vemos el jueves. Hasta luego. Adios. The traditional classroom environment doesn't suit everyone. Students that don't fit this pace of learning begin to lose confidence. The problem is, the current learning model has holes in it. Luckily, the everlearner.com is here to fill those holes. With the Everlearner classroom, each student is given a chance to master each subject at their own pace. With thousands of video tutorials and tens of thousands of automated questions on the site, students can progress at their own individual pace. And because every interaction is tracked within the site, teachers can review students' progress and gain access to razor-sharp data. Teachers will have more time to engage with small groups and be better informed of where their time and support is needed. 
With the EverLearner, teachers can leave the traditional model behind and become facilitators, coaches and inspirers. There's a reason we have over 100,000 registered students. To learn more, visit our website today. I'm